All right, we move ahead to our next guest. He returns to action this Saturday at UFC Vegas 22. He takes on Roman Delize. Trevin Giles joins us on the program and on Fight Week. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So a little uh, behind the scenes chat here. Took us a while to get this thing going between getting the, the audio to work and then getting everybody to stay in the room to produce this thing. I mean, technology is a, is a son of a gun, is it not, Trevin? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, well, it is. We've been struggling for a little bit, but we got it. <laughs> I wanted to say much filthier language than son of a gun, but I caught myself. But uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate you joining me, man, uh, especially on Fight Week. As we have all learned over the last year, especially, card is subject to change is a is a very real thing. You were supposed to face uh, Drickus Duplessis on this card, and unfortunately he had visa issues and was forced out of the fight. So I'm curious, when were you made aware that things were getting switched up and you were getting a new opponent? Just like a couple of days ago. I want to say it was Saturday. So not too bad. It's better than the crowd situation when you find out, what, the day before? Right. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that time it was under a little bit of different circumstances because, you know, the guy had some issues with his weight and ended up having to get hospitalized. Uh, he tried to cut too much. But um, it was kind of similar to uh, actually when I fought um, – my last fight, Bevin. I was supposed to fight uh, uh, John Young Park, I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and then he had visa issues too, so we, we, it, didn't, it didn't happen. I mean, it's just part. Of, it's part of the sport, and it's part of kind of like this world we're living in right now, where things can just happen mm -hmm. and things switch up all the time. So it's hard to get comfortable. But uh, especially the guy like with Drickus, he had a great debut. He had a lot of buzz coming into the UFC, coming from the international circuit, the EFC champion, former KSW champion, had a great first round stoppage against Marcus Perez. Losing the opponent, obviously, it's it's happened to you before. It's out of your control. But were you kind of bummed that you were losing out on a on a chance to derail that train a little bit? No, I mean, I, I never, I never think about trying to derail anybody's uh, train or anything like that. I mean, I think it's good when guys get hype behind them, you know, get some more fans and stuff. We all kind of have the same goal, you know. Everybody wants to go in there and and uh, just you know have good performances and and make some money. So uh, people are hyped up. I, I never mind that, but um, I, I was so that my intention isn't to derail any train, but just to beat them, you know. So. Uh, whenever I have an opponent in mind and I'm supposed to fight somebody, I have a mindset to fight them. Um, I always like to be able to just to get that done because that's what I've been visualizing, you know. So more than anything, uh, it's just upsetting. I won't be able to get the opportunity to do that right now. So you don't you, I mean, there's a lot of fighters out there who like look for chips on, to find heading into these fights to add to their shoulders. You're, you're not that kind of a guy. You don't need a chip. You just know you're going in there to fight somebody and try to make some money. Yeah, man, it's a it's a it's a competition. I mean, we can be competitive and stuff like that. That's fine. But um, I don't know any of these guys before I fight them, you know, so um, and I don't need to look for a reason to be angry or or, or not like the guys to, to put hands on them. Um, for me, it's a sport, you know, I mean, that's it. Right. So, I mean, I, we can fight and then afterwards I'll shake your hand like I always do. Uh, it's, it's nothing personal for me. When I saw that Roman Delize was your opponent, my third well, my first thought was, all right, short notice, maybe Trevin's like, forget a weight cut, he's going to fight him at 205, since Roman's entire career was either at 205 or at heavyweight, and it turns out he's going to make the drop to 185 on short notice. Did you kind of have a double take when you found out you were fighting Roman Delize at 185 pounds? Um, I, to be honest, I didn't, I, I didn't know who he was. Um, I got... Uh, I ended up finding out I wasn't fighting my last opponent. And then um, one of my coaches uh, sent me his name and, and said, hey, you know, we might want to jump on this uh, tonight or whatever because of, you know, whatever reason. So then I was just like, let's do it. Right. And then I started looking at film and stuff afterwards. Um, and then I, and then, and I didn't even know he was fighting at, at light heavy or anything like that until. I watched film and then started seeing people, you know, talk about it and talk about how he's cutting down and stuff. So, um, I, I didn't, I didn't think much of it, man. I, right now I'm just glad to still uh, be able to fight this weekend. So nothing really changes for you whatsoever. Same mentality, same game plan. Maybe, you, maybe some things change a little bit just based on watching film, but for the most part, nothing's really changing from one opponent to the next. 
That's right, man. I just try to keep myself in the same mental space. I don't want to get all tripped out about opponent switching. It seems like that's the name of the game now, right? I mean, these days that's just kind of how it's going to happen. So uh, just kind of got to go with it. It's funny, like talking to different fighters because some are like fully engulfed in the fight game and they watch every single event and every single fight. And I know you're like, you're a busy guy, you're a police officer, you got a million things going on, but do you try to like separate yourself from the sport or do, or do you at least try to watch whatever you're available to watch when it comes to like being a fan of the sport? Yeah. So I, I'm a, I'm a fan of a couple of fighters. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a fan of the sport. Um, there are, there are always, um, I always get people like, Hey, did you see such and such fight? Right. Like, and there are just so many people that I'm not aware of. Right. Just cause I, I don't really watch it that much. Right. And not unless, uh, not unless there's like a, you know, a big event going on, you know, like if you, anytime you get John Jones fighting Conor McGregor, like, the, you know, the big names and stuff like that. And then, you know, some of the guys that I know as well, right. If I, if I see some of those guys fighting then, uh, or I know they're getting, getting ready to fight, then I'll watch. But other than that, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the sport. Uh, it's a lot more fun when you know somebody that's fighting. But it's, I guess it's kind of like, I talked to Max Holloway about a month ago and he just, the fact that he separates from himself from the sport completely is like so refreshing to him. Like he fights, goes through fight week, has his performance, and then he's just gone until he has, you know, signs for his next fight. And it's like so refreshing to him. Is it kind of like that for you? Like just being able to separate yourself from the sport and, you know, be Trevin, the person, Trevin, the police officer, and then Trevin, the fighters, like a completely different person at, at a completely different time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. I mean, it's, it's definitely like that. I mean, for me, even just being a police officer outside of my uniform, I'm, I don't think about being a police officer. I don't think about doing any of that stuff outside of fighting. I don't think about fighting. I mean, fighting is stressful, man. I mean, when you know that you're getting ready to, to, to go and fight somebody and they could possibly hurt you and and you just, you know, you get you got a bunch of confidence going on, but then you got doubts and, and there's just a bunch of stuff that goes on in your head, you know? So uh, whenever it's all said and done, um, I like for it to be, to be done. Right. Like I don't, I don't go and, and, and think about fighting or anything like that again, until I start getting into camp. Um, and then it, it, it feels good again. Right. Because other than that, I, I'd be, if I did anything other than that, I think I'd, I'd just be stressed, stressed out. And I think I'd, I think it'll burn you out if you're, if you're always about fighting. So I agree with, with Holloway. It's, it's a lot easier separating yourself. Speaking of fighting, you looked great in your last fight, but it was, it, I mean, it's been quite the road to get there. I mean, you had the two losses, you had the, like we talked about the, the James Krause thing where you had the opponent switch in a day. Then the, the thing with before the Kevin Holland fight where you fainted, but you get back in there in November and you stop a very tough guy in Bavon Lewis in the third round after everything you had gone through over the last 18 months, maybe a little more than that. What did it feel like to go in there, have that kind of performance and, and get a finish like that? I mean, it, it felt good, man. I mean, you can't you can't stop life from happening to you, right? I mean, sometimes we go through all these rough patches and stuff. I mean, you just gotta have enough uh, enough uh, faith to know everything's gonna gonna come together, right? So when I had that fight and everything came together the way I needed to, it felt good. Um, it, it just lets you it it, it makes you it, it makes you understand how how uh, important it is not to quit and not to hang your head down, right? So. Uh, stuff will happen and it, it is what it is. But yeah, whenever, uh, when I got that fight and I actually got to finish him and everything, it, uh, it did feel good. I, I feel like I got some momentum behind me now. Finding out you were, cause I remember like everything with, with the Kevin Holland thing and you know, there's like a certain rule, especially now in MMA, like, you know, a fight isn't official until both guys are in the octagon. We even saw it with Chad Skelly. He's in the octagon and Jamal Emmers had back spasms. He didn't even make it out to the octagon. So it's just like a strange situation. Yeah. But finding out that the reason you fainted and I saw your Instagram post the next day was due to some heart issues. Was that kind of a scary thing for you? Did you was there a part of you that's like, man, like this is this is crazy. Why is this happening? Like I might not be able to do this anymore. Yeah, it was scary. I mean, anytime something happens and then it threatens your career. Um, and not just your career, man, but when you start talking about your life, right? I mean, I, I had a bunch of weird, uh, weird people. Um, a lot of uh, MMA fans and stuff like that. They like to, I, for some reason, it's it's more entertaining for them to feel like I was afraid. So I, I fainted and 
and I don't know, it was some kind of way of me to get out of the fight or something, right? <laughs> but um, it's weird, man. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but anyway, so, but yeah, just, just hearing that at first, it was, it was like, I didn't know what was going on, right? Um, I, I just wasn't aware of anything that was going on. And then uh, I, I saw the everybody around me and then um, they kind of had funny looking like looks on their faces. Um, we ended up, I ended up saying I felt fine because I did. You know, I mean, once I came to, I felt fine. I didn't know what happened at first. I was like, I, I know damn well Holland didn't knock me out, right? Like, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know if the fight was over or something, you know? So, um, but uh, I ended up getting transported to the hospital, got to the hospital. A few nurses and stuff were around me. And then uh, they started looking at my monitor funny. And um, then the doctor came up and he's just like, he said that my uh, my heart stopped for a, a decent period of time, but it was weird because I was talking to one of my coaches apparently while my heart stopped, right? Um, and he said they'll just keep a close look on me. So I spent the night there. They said it happened a couple more times overnight, and then it stopped happening. So I don't know what it was, but uh, you know when stuff like that happens, you think about your career and you think about your family. You know, I mean, that's those are I mean more than anything your family, right? So. I don't know. I didn't know if my life was just going to change after that, but I haven't had any issues since. So I'm good. I'm going to keep going. Did you end? Cause I know in that Instagram post, you said you were going to go see a cardiologist and try to get some answers. Did you, did you end up doing that? Yeah. I mean, even while I was, uh, they were putting, doing all types of tests on me while I was in Vegas. And then, uh, they wanted to keep me. So I told them, you know, no, I, I want to go home to my family. Right. They were worried about me and stuff. So, uh, I had uh, some doctors and stuff I know down here. Um, they they put me in a room with some specialists and stuff, and they started, I mean, it seemed like every day a needle was getting stuck in me, and I'd always had to have all this crap sticking to my skin and stuff. Um, but th- from what they were saying is they I looked healthy to them, um, and they don't know why uh, – I had heart issues when I was when I was backstage over there. They don't know what was going on in Vegas, uh, but they said I look fine right now. And they were just saying keep an eye on it. And if it happens again, come back in. Um, like I said, I haven't had any issues. And when I was in Vegas, they said they saw it happen multiple times overnight, but then it stopped. Um, so again, I don't know. I mean, so when I got to Houston, they didn't really see much. They saw that I was healthy, and we set up the next fight. Yeah, and then you got a knockout, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a all's yeah. all, all's well that ends well, I guess. I mean, yeah. middleweight in the middleweight division right now, it's really interesting. There's a lot of big fights at 85 over the next month or so. One of them is in the main event this Saturday with Derek Brunson and Kevin Holland. Do you feel like 185 is as interesting as it's ever been now, with like all these new contenders emerging, the champion being Israel Adesanya? Do you see a lot of opportunity in this division right now? Yeah, I, to me. In my opinion, and not even just saying it because I'm in the division, but I think it, it is the most exciting division um, because you have the perfect mix of of knockout power and skill, right? So, I mean, you, you look at heavyweights. Heavyweights are kind of starting to get more athletic and stuff, and 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 look better. Uh, but for the most part, they're they're like they're bruisers, right? Like they just come out to to land a, a shot and put you away, right? I mean there's usually not a whole bunch of technique that's put towards it, but, and then you get down to 205. It's, it's similar, uh, but they have a little more skill and the, but not as good cardio. And then you get to 185, and there's like the mixture. Right. And then it kind of, the power and stuff starts going down once you, once you get there, right. Like fights last longer once you start going to the smaller weight classes. So I think the middleweight division is definitely the most scariest because um, guys are athletic and, and, and they can kind of do it all, you know? So right now I think it's very exciting. I mean, like you said, there's not a lot of time to like prepare for Roman. You watch a little bit of film on him. You're not a guy that watches all the time. So you you weren't even familiar with him when you got the name, but from what you've seen, like in the film that you've watched and the, in the fights you've seen with Roman, what what have you made of his rise? You know, he's eight. No, what what have you made of his skill set and kind of the openings you see in this fight on Saturday? I think um, I think his his best uh, thing that he's got going for him is just his confidence, um, and I can't. He he seems very confident. Uh, I, I think that uh, my edge is going to be um, my athleticism, 
and my my striking and my speed. I don't think that he's going to be able to deal with that. Um, I expect him to try to uh, mix up his his striking to try to get me worried about his striking to to get a little respect with the striking and then try and sneak a takedown on me uh, to slow down uh, my game and stuff. But um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think that he's 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 a decent fighter. I don't think that he's um, I don't think that he's somebody that that's uh, he doesn't look like an easy guy to put away. I mean, nobody's done it right. So. It, it's interesting, and he's kind of unpredictable with his leg locks. I'd see he'd like drop down, like from somebody's open guard and try to grab a leg lock, right, or a heel hook, <laughs> right. So it's it's interesting. I mean, I think he's going to be a fun fight. I think it'll be a fun fight. I think it'd be one that's good for uh, the fans and everybody to look at. Um, it, it'll be good. It'll be an entertaining fight. Apparently, he's been looking to make the move to 85 for a little while, so I think he's already been trying to cut down and and slim down to get there. Is there a part of you that's concerned? You know, like you said, it's it's a big drop off between 205 and 185. That's a, that, that's a big drop. Are you concerned about mm-hmm. possible, especially with the short notice? Are you concerned that maybe a hiccup on the scale because, or are you just not concerned because it's not in your control? It's it's not in my control. Uh, it, it concerns me a little bit. You know, um, I trust that he's going to get there. You know, I don't think that a guy that's coming from 205 or that's always been fighting heavier. It just takes a short notice. And he's like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, uh, kill my body and get there. You know, hopefully he's not doing that. Right. So I already imagined that he was probably already, uh, set to try and make a 205, a, a 185 appearance. Um, but it, it worries me a little bit, right. You never know what, what guys are doing or what they're going through, you know? So, um, it worries me a little bit. I already had one opponent that, uh, can't fight. And now if I end up having another one that can't fight, that's going to be, irritating to me right because who knows if if uh somebody else pops up right if, if not then i gotta wait you know so we'll see what happens like you said it's out of my control so we'll see well i'm a silver lines guy i'm a positive thinker let's uh all things good both of you guys make way we step into the octagon on saturday how do you see this thing playing out um I think that uh, he seems to be patient, so I think that it'll it'll start off being a little chess match. Maybe it just it all really just depends on what you see when you get out there. But um, like I said, I think that I'm going to have the speed advantage. I think my striking is going to be better than his, um, and I see him trying to uh, to close the distance. And I I expect to be catching him with some nice shots and and, and probably finish him if he if he's if he's out there and he's and he's sluggish. Um, I know he's been cutting weight, so maybe he's a little bit faster, but um, if he's if he's sluggish, I'll finish him at uh, maybe end of the first or uh, maybe towards the the middle of the second. I, I wanted to get your take on something because you said something earlier that kind of boggled my mind when we were talking about the uh, the heart issue and fans hitting you up thinking that you were, you were ducking and you were afraid to fight Kevin Holland. And I, it's something that I saw you post on social media as well after the Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier fight because I know you took umbrage with with some people and some fans sort of giving. Connor a hard time about the loss mm. and, and everything. And and we're seeing a lot of that when it comes to what happened in the fight between Aljamain Sterling and Piotr Jan with the illegal knee. And you know, this as well as anybody, it can be pretty rough on the interwebs at times being part of this sport. What is that like, man? Like as a fighter to deal with these kinds of things and how do you navigate that stuff? Because it's probably hard to ignore and you don't want to drive yourself too crazy with it. Well, I mean, it's annoying, man. I mean, you, you just got to get to a point where you understand that these people aren't in your position. That's where they're talking. Right. I mean, you can. These same people, if they if they could uh, watch what happened to me and, and have something to say or say that I'm scared and all that other stuff. The reason why you don't really see fighters saying stuff like that is because they actually have to fight. Right. So if they got to fight next week, they don't want to be talking right now and then get knocked unconscious by somebody next week. Right. Um, it's, it's just real, you know, like, uh, and a lot of fighters know that things happen, right? I mean, we, we put our bodies through a lot, so, um, stuff happens, but it, it gets, it's, it's very annoying. It, it's, it's extremely annoying, especially when you, I mean, before I made it to the UFC, I was, uh, I want to say I was, I was nine and oh, or eight and oh, one of those, uh, with, with all finishes, but one, right. I was finishing everybody like crazy. And then I came into the UFC, got two finishes, knockout finishes. Then I stopped and went to the police academy, came back, took a couple losses. And now it's like everything, everybody forgets everything. Right. 
or if you have a heart problem, right? They can know you have a heart problem, but for some reason, it's just more entertaining if I was scared, right? <laughs> so I, I don't know, man. And, and it doesn't help that um, people, I mean, people say things. I mean, even Dana, right? Like Dana will say stuff, right? And he's he's a civilian too, right? It's not like he's he's somebody who's getting out of there and putting anything on the line, right? So he he says stuff too. Like he 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 basically led towards me being scared. He's like, Oh, you know, these are big events and you know, some of these guys can handle it. Some of these guys can't. And, and so he'll say stuff like that. So when fans hear stuff like that and it's coming from Dana now it's like, Oh, well, Dana's saying it. Right. So, right. It's like some, for some reason he has some kind of credibility there uh, when he's never had to really lace up and, 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 and do the job, you know? Um, and it doesn't help also when, you know, I mean, Holland was was talking too. You know, he was like, "Oh, he." I think he said, "I held my breath" or something like that to get out of the fight. I held my breath and passed out. But you know, he 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 made it clear that he was uh he was just upset that the fight didn't happen and stuff. So I won't go too much on that. But um, when people hear that, it, it becomes an entertaining uh thing for them to just keep it going, right? Like, oh, he was scared, right? It's that's the fun thing. It's I guess it's much more fun than me having heart issues. It's crazy, man. So crazy. It's like, and you kind of just want to see the meat, a little humble pie once in a while. Like, especially like when they say that and then they find out you have heart issues, you'd be like, Ooh, probably, sh- probably yeah. should take that comment back. Right. And then they won't, right? Like they, <laughs> they don't care, man. They don't care. These people are ruthless, man. They, they, these, these people are like, ah, man, it's just natural to feel like hurting these people. Right. But they're just, there's no telling who they are. I mean, they could be unhappy people, people that don't have stuff going on for them in their own lives. And you just don't know. Right. So I don't know. I just, I try not to think about it too much, but it, it's annoying. Yeah. And I mean, I think at the same time, it kind of feels like the sports made it in a way because you see this in every other sport too. Like Tom Brady, like I, I'm a, I'm a Boston guy, big Tom Brady fan. Even when he went to Tampa, I'm still going to take, take pride in that victory, but people just hate Tom Brady for no reason. He's just a, a guy who wins and people just hate him. It's just yeah, it's, it's wild. Man, I think it's people don't like success that much, right? I mean, if you get you get people that uh I think that it has to do with people's own internal issues, right? If you get somebody who never loses, I mean, you get a guy that loses that stuff in life and then that guy sees somebody who's not losing. He's winning. Then it's just like now they want to wait for him to lose and they want to wish him a loss because it means that they're not as bad, right? It's like, oh, well, if he loses, then maybe I don't suck so much, right? Like, so they try to push it off on somebody else, you know? So I think that's all it is. I think that's why people wanted to see Floyd lose too, is because you have to lose. For some reason, in people's mind, you have to. You just, you have to, right? But you don't, right? So <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. I, I think people aren't happy, man. Eh, it happens. I mean, we're in a pandemic too, so that doesn't doesn't help very much. But uh, we could talk about these kinds of things till we're blue in the face, Trevin. But I appreciate yeah. the time, man, especially on fight week because I know you got a million things going on. You're getting ready to travel to Vegas tomorrow. So all the best to you on the trip and uh, in the fight on Saturday, man. Looking forward to it. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thanks.